How you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Saturday. Over here in the Atlantic, we do still have four systems of interest that we're tracking, but in reality, if you look at it, there's really not that all that much going on out here. It's actually fairly quiet, which is funny, but all these systems are pretty weak out here. There is one way up here that you cannot see on this image, and that is Tropical Storm Franklin, which developed from Tropical Depression 6 yesterday, which developed from Invest 95L. I noted that this probably wouldn't deserve classification due to its interaction with a frontal boundary here that it was along. I still kind of question whether this is fully tropical. However, it does deserve the name. Either way, you can see it's definitely warm core in here. It's debatable whether it's still along the front here, but the NHC made the call and went ahead and named it. And even if it was subtropical, it would still get the name. So this is our Franklin for 2011, our third frontal development. So that's we have six names now. Half of them have been from frontal boundaries out in the Atlantic, which is interesting. And that's those these names don't really mean a whole lot in terms of the overall tropical activity in the Atlantic, but we do have them, and these deserve to be classified. This guy is moving out northeast and out to sea and will not be a danger to anybody as he is now moving into very cold water. And if we go back to the big screen here, we have a couple more invests to talk about. This is Invest 94L, split off from the remnants of Emily. This is Emily's ghost or daughter or something along that nature right here. has a little bit of a circulation developing with it now and is probably going to try to curve out here somehow between these two ridges, the one here and the one here over the next couple of days will not be much of a threat here. Bermuda might get some showers from this. It'll be interesting to see that, but not a threat for significant development. Same deal with 92L here. Also might make a pass towards Bermuda towards Bermuda before curving out, but not a lot of organization here, doesn't have a circulation, and the environment in here is not favorable for these to get very strong before curving out. Kind of just a mess is what this whole area is right here. It's just kind of a mess. This is another portion that's split off from 94L. Who knows? That might become 96L trying to come back in here. The models keep it as a fishy little rainmaker in here during the next few days. The Canadian even tries to retrograde this into the Gulf of Mexico and develop it in like a week, which is a little bit slow, so I kind of doubt that. But it'll be interesting to see if this tries to pop in here over the next few days, though again, I doubt that significant development is possible with any of these features out here. Invest 93L is perhaps the worst looking of all of these out here in the Central Atlantic. And as we've been talking about for the last couple of days, don't look for immediate development of this. In fact, it looks pretty you can barely see that it's there, but it is a clear perturbation in the flow in this area, which means that it's still around. It's an area of low pressure, converging winds here, and it is embedded in a deceptively deep layer of moisture. If we go out to the CIMSS, total precipitable water product, Invest 93L is in here. The Saharan air layer is up here to the north. It's embedded in the monsoon trough, and thus there is a deep layer of moisture field with it. And as this comes westward in here, it's going to be encountering much warmer water. If we turn on the sea surface temperatures in here, You've got the big area of 29 Celsius plus water west of 50 west, and as this gets into this area, it may try to fire up more. The, the theme this year, and I mentioned this before the season even began, is that this area of the world right here in the Atlantic has much above normal ocean heat content due to the abnormally strange winter that we had over North America over here during the winter of 010 and 11. And because of that, this is the area where the waves have been trying to get going the most this year. We had Dawn try to flare up in here before getting torn apart in the Caribbean by Hispaniola. And we also had Emily try to get going in here before she developed. And this is the area where these things are trying to flare up, where the ocean heat content is much above normal. So when this gets over here, east of the islands, we may hear a little bit more from it down the road. And it looks like because it is this week, it's going to try to make a run for the Caribbean here over the next few days. It was originally forecast to get north of the Caribbean, but due to the overstated development on the models, it has stayed weak and will probably sneak towards the islands here over the next several days, and thus these folks may need to keep an eye on this. We may not have heard the last from this system. It may look pretty bad right now, but this could be an issue down the road because these things like to stick around, and if this does try to look a little bit more defined in here, the low pressure will be 
maintained by the warm water in here and we have the MJO coming back into our area of the world this is the GFS and we have the MJO now coming out towards here and is forecast to keep on coming out into octants one and two these octants favor upward motion in the Atlantic and so we're going to be having upward motion increasing in the Caribbean area as this feature moves into it which means that over the next few days conditions will be coming much more favorable for this so if it can hang on and get into this area it may be something to watch in this area of the world down the road and we're going to talk about this little feature for the rest of the video here this is the 8 to 10 day 500 millibar anomalies for comparing the uh, European model over here and the GFS on the right and the big feature that I want to point out right now is on both of these notice the very strong trough over Alaska and the Gulf of Alaska here and no, this is not me being selfish talking about where I live here. This is actually something that's important. This is the trough in here. And this is one of the stronger troughs I've seen this summer. In fact, the Canadian has a 967 millibar surface low in the Gulf at this time associated with this trough. Very strong for mid-August, even for Alaska standards. And this strong trough here implies that heights are going to get pumped in here over western Canada, which implies that the ridge is going to be shifting west towards the Rockies in here. And if this is shifting, if heights are getting pumped in here, the Texas Ridge is going to want to slide up in here and fill out this ridging area over the western United States. And what that means is that what we've had so far this season is we've had the Texas Ridge really strong in here. We'll keep drawing over here for the sake of consistency. The Texas Ridge has been really strong over here in the south. The troughs haven't wanted to dig into the western Atlantic, but we've had the western Atlantic Ridge pretty strong. Texas Ridge pretty strong. The weakness has been in here near the Bahamas and perhaps east of Florida and here. And so that's why we had Emily come up in here. And this is also why Dawn got drawn up here and then westward. The weakness has been here. If this ridge gets developed over the western United States, that weakness starts to shift a little bit farther west. And you can see on both of these ensemble means that, or not ensemble means, but the 8 to 10 day means that the weakness is more over the eastern Gulf here. And if we had a system that was coming in north of the Caribbean, this still would not be able to get into the Gulf of Mexico because this ridge again would block it. Such a system would curve out. Uh, very sharply near Florida like this. But if we have a system that's instead coming through the Caribbean, there's a whole new set of possibilities that open up with this because if we have the weakness in here, it's a classic setup for a Caribbean system to get drawn north and then end up in the Gulf of Mexico. And this is one of the first times this season when we have the chance for a deep tropical system to really do something in the Gulf of Mexico. We had dawn, but we all knew that that was going to be a weakling and it was almost nothing. But if we get a deep tropical storm coming out of the Caribbean, it may be something to watch in this area. And this is the GFS 12Z run here. We're going to show that in three days, here it is near the islands, and it hasn't done a whole lot. Since it was in here, the pressure is still 1,011 millibars again, staying weak until it gets into this area, and then we may hear from it more down the road, because if we go out to day five, it's cruising through the Caribbean now, and it's looking like something that could strengthen down the road. And if we get to day seven, Look at what the GFS starts to do. It starts to feed it back in here. And if we go out to day eight, we have a storm moving northwest towards the Gulf of Mexico. And this may still be a little bit too far south here. It'll be, it'll depend. It's still a very long way out here. The weakness, you see a big storm in a front up here. The weakness is going to be over the southeast United States. So this could curve up early and try to get up over Cuba or it could try to do what it's doing here on these runs. The European dropped the system but brought the vorticity into the Northwest Caribbean as well. I've been saying that in general, this area of the world, the Southeast United States and perhaps the Caribbean islands should watch this. And now that it's remaining weaker, as we noted over the last couple of days, this area could be threatened by it down the road if it survives. And then what this does is eventually it takes it into Texas by day 12 and here. And I threw in the 500 millibar map to show that the weakest link in the ridge is over the eastern Gulf Coast here by day 8, which is a shift west from where it has been, which means that if the weak link is in here, this is going to try to move into the Gulf of Mexico here instead of into the Yucatan and Central America with this trough coming down over Wisconsin. So it's something that we may have to watch closely over the next several days. It's still a very long way out. In fact, we may not get it to develop at all in here, but if it does, I, I have a feeling this will, we'll hear a little bit more from this as it gets into this area here over the next few days with the MJO coming back over our area of the world. Conditions in here will be more favorable, and the water is very warm in here. That's the other thing. The reason the GFS blows this up so strong in here, it's no surprise really. Here's the reason right here. 
The ocean heat content is extremely warm in here. The Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, the Gulf of Mexico especially is much above normal. Northwest Gulf, I'm afraid it would not be very pretty. And if we get any kind of a defined area of low pressure in the Caribbean, it would not take a whole lot to wind this up into a hurricane in this area. So this is something that folks should be concerned about if this gets into the area. No real worries right now because the wave is still way out here. May not even develop. But if it gets into this area and remains well defined, chances are when it gets farther west, it's going to try to cause some mischief. So folks in this entire area here may have to watch this down the road. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.